Hello my YouTube friends, I want to welcome you to another exciting lesson in Revit. In this lesson, I just want to show some very very important tools when it comes to modeling and detailing of RIBA in Revit. And the tools that we are going to look at are the, you know, the RIBA partitions, the partitions in Revit. We also look at how you can number your RIBA in Revit. And finally, we're also going to look at how you can create a schedule that is for the RIBA. So make sure that if you like what I'm doing on this channel, subscribe to my channel, share with your friends. Now, I don't want to waste much of your time, so let's get started in this lesson. Now, before I proceed, if there's anyone who'd like to learn in a course that is Revit Architecture, Revit Structure, and Robo Structure Analysis Professional, make sure that you check the links in the description and I'll keep on adding more and more courses. Okay, so from here, this is the model that we are going to use and I'll start by placing the RIBA on a partition. Now, when you are creating RIBA for detailing also, make sure that you place the RIBA on a partition and a partition in some codes like the you know the british standard and also the euro code that's the one on the schedule which should be seen as a member okay so in revit it's called a partition all right so once you create your riba and again if you want to know on how to create you know to place ribas on a footing like this please just go on my channel there are so many videos on how to you know to model the riba on a pad foundation like this one so once you model your riba like this you need to place these bars on a partition and to do that if I want to place this one on a partition, maybe this one is going to be base one. Just select the riba within there by selecting everything like that. I can go to filter, check none, structure riba, apply, okay. And once you do that, you need to go here. We, you see that you have the partition. So just click within there. Okay, so you see that there's nothing there, but I can now type the partition where I want to place my riba there. I'll call this one as the first base, so I'll call it base one. This is how I want my, you know, the river place under that one to be seen or to be, you know, named on my shade. So I'll call it base one. And it's just a matter of typing there. Then you can click on apply there and, or just enter from your keyboard and just move your, 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 your cursor within here. If I just click inside, then when I just pick any bar there, you'll see that. It's assigned to a partition so that is the member where i have my my rib okay so i can select there and still you know counter check it from there all right so now you can see from here maybe let me also place this one on the same partition and this one will be number two and this one will be number three so i'll select once again select everything make sure that everything is selected like that then I'll go to filter, check none, just pick the structural riba from there. And now since I already typed the base, okay, actually it's supposed to be called base one, but I'll still leave it as base. Then click on apply and just click inside. These bars are also assigned to that partition. So assuming that you are, you are modeling all the bars on your model, you are going to sign all the bars to a partition. If it's a beam, the way you are going to name them, make sure that those are assigned to a partition. Now, I'll create this one and I'll call it base number two. I'll just click there and I'll click on filter, check none, structural riba, apply, okay. From here, then I'll call this one as base two and click on apply and just click inside. So all these bars are on that partition. Did I miss anything? Select that. Let me select everything once again. Maybe I could have missed something here like that. Then filter, check none, structural riba, just do that and make sure that now you can see that some of the bars we are not, we are not assigned to anything. So I'll just call base, click on base two, apply. Okay, now all my bars are assigned to that partition as you can see from here. So this one, where did I put it? Okay, it's just on base. I'll do the same on this one, but this one is will be called base number three because I want to create three partitions. And the naming here will be dependent on the sizes of, you know, your bases and how, and the plan on how you're going to detail them. So click on check none, structural riba, apply, okay. And this is finally, I'll call it base number three, then click on apply, then click inside. Now for this one, I'll just assign it and let me just select all the bars like that. And I'll also assign it to the you know, to base number three as a partition. From there, I can just pick that one, apply. Okay, so all the riba on the bases have been assigned to a partition. 
Now, if I just go under structure, then I go to reinforcement. Now, what I want to check is the numbering. And you see that I'm going to see, you know, these, you know, bases there, the naming. Let me try to check there and go to reinforcement numbers. This is where you control the numbering, you know, for your project. Of course, it does it automatically. You don't need to do anything, okay? I'll click on, you know, reinforcement numbers and you can see the three bases and it has also picked for example the number of bars in each one ribbon numbers fabric these are not fabric so the ribbon numbers are here we have base one it starts from one up to eight base number two one up to five and you can see that base number three one up to five so if you haven't assigned any partition here you are not going to see anything here because you haven't assigned to a partition so make sure that you do that now, for example, if you want to have two digits here on the numbering, you can just change it there. Let me click on apply. And you can now see that it will start from one, but we have two digits, as you can see from here, 0, 01 to 0, 08. So you can still play with that. So Revit is able to assign the numbering to your bars, you know, automatically. Even if you haven't, you know, uh, you haven't assigned to this partition still number, but it's better you organize it within the partitions the way we just did it here. So now you see that we have removed some gaps. For example, if you delete some bars or you haven't assigned to a partition, you want to make some change, you are going to have a gap here and you can change the numbering so that you remove it. So let me click on OK. And maybe for some reason, if you maybe just delete some of the bars, OK, deliberately, I'm just going to delete some bars here. I'll click there. Let me delete somewhere there and then click outside and go back to structure and you know reinforcement and reinforcement numbers you can see that it will show you that there's some ribber which is missing here i think you can see even at the bottom here let me just show you know something here down here okay so you can see that it says one or more gaps exist in the number sequence because i removed some bars from here so make sure that you counter check so if i just go back here it's because of that bar now if for some reason i just want to remove you know that gap this is how i want my bars to be i can go there go to enforcement numbers still appear here you just need to click on remove gaps so that it can recalculate here and remove the bar which is missing okay because i've removed some bar but you need to click here so that you remove that bar from the numbering system and you are going to see how it's going to recalculate there so i'll click on apply now that bar is removed we have 01 up to 07 so this one is for removing bars for some reason if you remove some of the bars you can do that all right so let me click on okay now let me try to change maybe the you know the type of the bar there we see does it change anything let me go to h20 then click outside there go to reinforcement reinforcement numbers so it doesn't change anything because the only thing you are saying that in this base you know we have these are the bars and to number them according like that so it doesn't affect the type of the bar okay we'll see as we go in the schedule it will schedule it different differently once you start changing the sizes for your bars for numbering as long as it's on that partition it will number it like that so apply okay we are done with the numbering for this one and we have assigned everything all these bars to a partition now let's try to create a schedule and see how these things are organized within our schedule now i'm going to create a very very simple schedule to create a schedule i can go down here and you see that we have schedules and quantities i'll right click and i can click on new schedule and quantities if i don't want to do that let me just cancel there I can go to there's a schedule. Where is my schedule? Okay, schedule under the view. Then I'll click there and I still can still go to schedules and quantities. And this is what you are going to be presented with. Even if you do it from there or even from the view there, you be presented with this. Now you need to pick the category from here. So I just need to find structural riba because that is the category of the schedule that I want to create. All right. So I'll find the structural riba. It's right here. That's the only thing you do here as a first step. And you can even rename it here if you want, but I'll rename it later within the table as you are going to see. I'll just click on OK. All right. Now, once you do that, this one is going to open. You see the category that I picked is right there. Now, under the available fields, now you have to pick the parameters that you want to load within your schedule. OK. 
Now, I'll make it simple for you. I'll just start with a partition. Remember, we created the partition. And for some people, you call it a member, okay? So I'll find the partition, click there, and just load it there. The next one is going to be the bar diameter, okay? Okay, and you even use the type, okay? So, but I'll use the bar diameter. Okay, so I'll type bar diameter right here. Maybe let me also find something like the type. I think I should have the... Uh, the type okay i can later on remove one of the two if i want the type that is the type of the you know the ribber the structural ribber because i have structural ribber there so i'll add it right there i'll remove one if i want let's let me just see how it come out all right now i'm going also going to pick the the ribber number from there i'll pick that ribber number and that is the bar mark for some people they call it a bar mark or others may call it you know different names but that is a ribber number okay i'll pick it from there then i also want to add the bar length i can find my bar length there because i want to know you know in what length am i going to cut these bars okay so i'll just add it there and finally i also want to add the total you know length of the bar for each one like for example for that member what is the total length and you can pick whatever you want from here depending on what you want to present in your bar you can see we have a lot of parameters a lot of available fields from here you can pick so i just want the total okay the total bar length from here i can add and for me this is okay you can add what you want from here to customize you know your schedule so you've seen how this is supposed to be done all you need to do is click on okay and you see that we have our schedule right here so this is the information that we added now if i want to make some filters here and there i can do that but from the look of things as you can see everything looks okay but if i want to filter some information for example i can go to the fields but maybe we'll not go deep into these filters you can see that you are able to filter all these if i just want to filter by maybe a partition okay i can go to filter click there then partition then this one is going to be equals maybe the best one that is if i just want to filter my schedule maybe to just best one because i don't want to show everything i can do that just click on okay and you see that only best one is going to be seen so these filters i've just you know done control z to undo so i can go back there and filters again if you want a detailed tutorial on filters you can mention there we can talk about schedule properties and look at all these filters these are the fields that we looked at we can do sorting and grouping here we are itemizing every instance but if i don't itemize you know we will not see what we want to see here so it has to be itemized like that if i click there because they are of different types and sizes so you can't put it in one on one line so that one has to be itemized like that so oh sorry not this one not here i'll go back there and make sure that itemize every instance is checked if i want to show the totals i can do that so this is how you create you know your schedule you see make use of the partition the numbering now here you see that i added the type and the bar diameter i think i don't need the bar diameter because i want to show the type as you can see from here the ribbon number that is the bar mark you can see that we have two digits there the bar length and the total bar length so i'm just going to hide this one right click i think i'm able to hide that column so that it's not seen here as you can see now i can rename from there for example if i want to have bbs for bar bending schedule i can do that if i want to rename this one depending on how you rename it if i want to call it member you can rename it the way you want it doesn't change the way that parameter is but you are just renaming from here member ribber number maybe i want this one to be bar mark this is how you can start changing you know some of these things and you can change the you know if you want cups or whatever you can do that so i'm okay with what i have this is how you can you know use you know you can assign the ribbon to a partition you know do the numbering and you are going to have a schedule like this one this one as you can see from here so if you like what i'm doing on this channel don't forget to subscribe see you in some upcoming lessons in future